By the end of this video, you are gonna have some perfect audio. All right, it may not be perfect, but today I'm gonna show you exactly how I edit my audio in DaVinci Resolve. I'm gonna show you the tools that I use and the effects that I use to just clean up the audio and make it sound the best that I can. If you're new here, my name's Jason Yudlovsky. I'm your DaVinci Resolve audio guy. Let's jump in Resolve and check it out. So in DaVinci Resolve here, I'm in the edit tab and I have a clip in my timeline. It's actually a GoPro clip and it doesn't have the best audio, right? There's gonna be some things we need to fix with it. So let's take a look at it. I'm gonna play it through once real quick. It's about 50 seconds, 55 seconds. And I'm gonna let you hear what it sounds like. And then we're gonna jump into editing this audio to make it sound awesome. Here's today's project. We were out pulling the kids around on the blaster the other day and I was riding around for a little while and then all of a sudden it just uh, just junked out on me, just stopped working. So I think we lost spark, which leads me to believe maybe there's like a grounding issue with the wires or something somewhere. So that's what I'm gonna kind of look into today, see if we can get her running and uh, start by seeing if we've got some spark. So that's where we're gonna go first. Um, jump in here, see about spark. This is a 2001 Yamaha Blaster I got from my buddy and uh, fixed it up a little bit, added some uh, new parts, and the thing's been, been great. Um, I do have a little leak in the tire head, so that effects. I gotta pop that off, see if I can get that to... All right, so that's what it sounds like. Now let's make some observations here. What do we need to fix and clean up in this audio? First thing we notice is that it's a little loud, right? So we're gonna wanna set our audio levels properly. The next thing I notice is that it does sound a little like boxy, right? It's a little bit hard to understand. So I wanna increase the clarity of this piece of dialogue. And then the other thing that I notice too is it sounds different from this part right here where I'm facing the camera to where I'm behind the camera. So we wanna separate those so we can edit them separately and make them sound the best that we can individually. So you always wanna start off with the best possible recording that you can. And in this case, I used my GoPro with a little microphone on top of it and it came out okay, it's not bad. It gives us something good to work with. So the first thing we wanna do is set our audio levels. You can do it manually or if you want to normalize your audio levels, you can select your clip, right click, and then come on up to normalize audio levels. And the option that I like to choose is this sample peak program. And that's gonna give us a target level of minus nine dBFS. So I'm gonna click normalize. We can see it drop down our levels for us. And let's just take a look at our meter here and see how that sounds. We wanna try and be close to that minus 10 dB right here. A grounding issue with the wires or something somewhere. So that's what I'm gonna come. Perfect, looks good. It's right in there. We're not going into the red. It looks perfect. Now we're gonna jump over into Fairlight. So in Fairlight here, the first thing I wanna do is actually split this clip into two different tracks so I can work with them separately. Because as we talked about in this first part, I'm facing the camera. In the second part, I'm behind the camera. So it sounds different and I need to edit those differently. So when it comes to your dialogue, you're gonna to wanna to separate out your dialogue into different tracks based on different microphones, different talent or people, different locations, whether you're in front of the camera, behind the camera, you wanna separate it out so you can work with it separately. So I'm just gonna zoom in here and I'm gonna just cut these clips right here and I'm just gonna drag and drop this down into a new track. So first let's work with the top track here. Now one of the things that I like to do when editing audio is to loop the playback of the section of audio. So in this case, I'm gonna select my range mode tool and I can just window over my clip. It'll set some in and out points and then just make sure you turn on your loop icon right here. And now when we play through this, it'll just keep looping over and over again. First thing I like to do, set your order of operation. So how is your audio gonna be affected by the EQ, the dynamics and the effects? So come over to your mixer. If you don't see your mixer, go ahead and open it up right here. And you should see your order right here. Now, if you don't see any of the items that I have here or that we're gonna talk about, come on up to the three little dots at the top, click on them and make sure that all these things are checked on here and then you'll be able to see exactly what I see. So in our order here, I'm gonna click on this. Now you can use whatever order you want. The order that I like to use for most of my stuff is this one right here, EQ, Dynamics, and then Effects. Once I've selected that, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the EQ right here by double clicking it and we're gonna to start to work with our EQ. So looking at our EQ here, I wanna try and clean up the audio. And the EQ is gonna be one of your best friends to help clean up your audio and just make it sound better. Now, a couple tips right off the bat for any dialogue. Typically, you wanna turn on band one and we're gonna apply what we call a high pass filter. So this is gonna allow everything above it to go through. Anything below it is gonna get cut out. So when it comes to dialogue, you really don't need any of the low, low end stuff. There's none of that in typical dialogue. So you'd wanna set this anywhere between maybe 100 and 125. Now I know from my voice, you know, somewhere around 120 usually works out pretty good, but let's play through this clip and I'm just gonna adjust this up and I'm gonna to listen to what I hear and listen for it to sound like it's cleaning it up a little bit. 
Here's today's project. We were out pulling the kids around on the blaster the other day, and I was riding around for a little while, and then all of a sudden it just uh, just junked out on me, just stopped working. So I think we lost. All right, I'm gonna go with 127 there. Now, all these changes are gonna be relatively subtle, so if you've got some good headphones, put them on so you can hear all the changes that we're gonna make. Now, when it comes to the EQ, just a quick overview here of how it works. Basically, you can grab any point you want and bring it up if you wanna boost a frequency or bring it down if you wanna cut a frequency. Typically, you wanna cut frequencies before you boost anything, and that's gonna help clean up your audio the most. So after I set my high pass filter on band one, I like to grab the next point, and I'm gonna change it to this bell-shaped curve right here, what I like to do is just bring it up, sweep it around a little bit, and listen for anything that sounds harsh to my ears. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're gonna do that with several of these points. Spark, which leads me to believe maybe there's like a grounding issue with the wires or something somewhere. So that's what I'm gonna kind of look into today, see if we can get her running, and uh, start by seeing if we've got some spark, so. So I'm trying to take out some of that rumble in there, right? That, that like kind of rumbly thickness kind of sound, right? Just to help clean it up and make it a little bit clearer to understand what I'm saying. So I'm just grabbing my point. I'm trying to find where it doesn't sound good. And then I'm going to reduce that frequency a little bit. Now you can change the shape of this bell curve in two different ways. You can use your middle mouse wheel here. So if you hover over your point, you can middle mouse wheel to make it broader or narrower. Or you can come down here and use the Q factor and just grab that and it'll do the exact same thing for you. Now, sometimes you wanna make a sharp change like this, and other times you wanna do a more broad change kind of like this. So I'm happy with this. So I'm gonna come and grab point three, do the same thing, cause I know there's some that doesn't sound so great up around 1K in that range. So let's see if we can find that. That's where we're gonna go first. Um, jump in here, see about Spark. Here's today's project. We were out pulling the kids around on the blaster the other day, and I was riding around for a little while, and then all of a sudden it just... All right, so I think that's helping a little bit. Now, if we wanted to add in a little bit of clarity, this is the one situation where I might wanna actually boost something on the EQ. So what I like to do is use point number five here, and you can use any one of these points. It doesn't matter which ones you use for what, uh, but I'm gonna grab point five. I'm gonna change to the bell-shaped curve, and I like to boost it somewhere in that four to 8K range, right? I'm gonna kind of broaden it out a little bit, and I'm just gonna raise it up a little bit and try and increase the clarity a little bit of my voice. Uh, just junked out on me, just stopped working. So I think we lost spark, which leads me to believe maybe there's like a grounding issue with the wires or something somewhere. So that's what I'm gonna kind of look into today. And the last thing I like to do is just take out some of the high end there because when it comes to dialogue, unless it's vocals like singing, you don't really need the high highs in there, right? It could just add a little extra noise that you don't want. So I'll turn on band six. I'm just gonna dial this back a little bit. Eh, maybe like that, 15, dial it back to like 15K or something. So let's do a quick little before and after here and you can hear the difference. Here's today's project. We were out pulling the kids around on the blaster the other day and I was riding around for a little while and then all of a sudden it just, uh, just junked out on me, just stopped. Okay, so it does sound a lot clearer to me. I hope you can hear that on your side. Now it did make it a little bit quieter. So in order to bring that back a little bit, we can grab our gain here and push this up in the EQ. So it's just kind of like readjusting our audio levels. So let's do that real quick. Stop working. So I think we lost spark, which leads me to believe maybe there's like a grounding issue with the wires or something somewhere. So that's what I'm gonna kind of. All right, so that's pretty good. I just adjusted it and watched down to my meter down here so I could push that signal back up to around minus 10 dB. Now it does still sound a little echoey and we're gonna be able to fix that in a little bit. But for now, I think this is pretty good on the EQ. It helped clean up the muddiness a little bit and increase the clarity a little bit of our dialogue. So with your dialogue, just go through the same process that we just went through and see how you can find those areas that don't sound good, reduce those frequencies, and it should help clean it up for you. So I'm gonna close my EQ. Next, let's jump into dynamics. In our dynamics here, we're gonna to wanna to take a look at our compressor first. Now there are some presets up here. You could just come up here, click a preset, and we could pick one of these guys, let's say dialogue compression, and we could just play through it and see how it sounds. Now, what the compressor is gonna do is reduce the loud parts a little bit, and then we can use the makeup slider to increase the quieter parts a little bit. So a compressor basically reduces the dynamic range a little bit, so that way it's better listening for your audience or whoever's watching your videos. Now, in our dynamics panel here, this is the compressor being activated, and then we've got three meters right here, the first meter is our expander and gate, which is currently off. The second meter here is our compressor, and the third would be our limiter, which is also off. So let's see what happens on this middle meter with our compressor. Look into today, see if we can get her running, and uh, start by seeing if we've got some spark. So here's today's project. We were out pulling the kids around on the blaster the other day. 
right, so I think that's pretty good. Now, one thing you want to notice is when you're seeing the meter activate here, you want to make sure it's not really going below minus 6 dB too much, right? That's kind of the limit of where you want it to go before it starts sounding a little weird. When it comes to your compressor settings, you generally want to go between 2 and 3 to 1 for dialogue. And then the threshold you can adjust as you find necessary. And then default is minus 15. In this case, minus 24 works pretty good. And you could just leave all of the other settings as it is in the preset here, but feel free to make any changes that you might want. Now we notice we do have a little bit of background noise, right? I'd call it a high noise floor, kind of just because of the garage and the echoing and all that. So we can use an expander or a gate to help reduce the sound of that or the volume of that. So in this case, I want to use an expander. And the difference between an expander and a gate, a gate is like nothing comes through until that gate opens, right? It, it, it does a hard cutoff at a certain point. Whereas an expander just kind of lowers the volume of everything below a certain dB level. So that's why I want to use the expander. I'm going to dial the expander up a little bit. Let's leave it at maybe minus 30 dB right here. And then I can increase my ratio a little bit. And you can see once the sound is below 30 dB, which is this blue line right here, it's going to make it quieter faster. So let's see if we can uh, play through a little bit, turn it off and then turn it on and notice a difference. Day. And I was riding around for a little while and then all of a sudden it just, uh, just junked out on me, just stopped working. So that's where we're gonna go first. Um, jump in here, see about spark. So I don't know if you can tell, but in between the words where I'm talking, there's less of that like kind of background like noise. So I hope you can tell that there, but the expander is great for just kind of getting rid of some of that background noise in between your speaking and your talking and that kind of stuff. It just makes the quieter stuff a little bit quieter, a little bit quicker. So I use the expander all the time. And if you want it to get quieter quicker, you can adjust your ratio right here. And that's going to drop down what you hear in the background and make it quieter a whole lot quicker. Now let's get back to our dialogue and I'm going to show you the two effects that I like to use on my dialogue that are built-in effects here in DaVinci Resolve. Free version studio doesn't matter. So again, I'm just going to select my range here for my dialogue. I'm going to solo this track so we can hear just this track. Now let's go over to the mixer, our effects right here. You want to come down to dynamics, Fairlight effects and the multi-band compressor. So you might notice that our dialogue is sounding a little thin now, right? Because we removed some of those sounds we didn't like, sounds a little thin. The multi-band compressor is gonna allow us to add in a little bit of uh, thickness or meat, I'd say, to the dialogue. So you can start with the preset here, impact and balance, and see how that sounds. So let's play through and hear that. Here's today's project. We were out pulling the kids around on the blaster the other day, and I was riding around for a little while, and then all of a sudden it just uh, just junked out on me, just stopped working. So I think we lost spark, which leads me to believe maybe there's like a grounding issue with the wire. All right, so I made a few adjustments there, right? We've got four bands where we can apply uh, compression to just those frequency ranges, right? So I came and adjusted them a little bit. You can see what I've got on the screen here. Um, right in this range right here, this is where a lot of the dialogue is going to live. And with the preset, this was boosted up like this, and it just sounds too sharp to me, right? So I brought it back down a little bit to help kind of make it not sound as harsh to my ear. So let's do a little before and after here. You can hear what that sounds like. Here's today's project. We were out pulling the kids around on the blaster the other day, and I was riding around for a little while, and then all of a sudden it just, uh, just junked out on me, just stopped working. So I think... All right, so I think that sounds good. I hope you guys can hear that. Now, if you wanted to bring back some of the body and the fullness to the vocal or the dialogue, you're going to want to take a look at the band two here, right? And that is where I made a little boost, right? Because that's where kind of the thickness of the dialogue comes from. So I'm going to play it, drop it down, and then put it back up, and you can hear the difference. Bark, which leads me to believe maybe there's like a grounding issue with the wires or something somewhere. So that's what I'm going to kind of look into today, see if we can get her running, and uh, start by seeing if we've got some spark. So. so I think that sounds good. It adds a little fullness back to the dialogue there. So the multiband compressor can do a great job of really just taking and applying compression to certain frequency ranges and just balancing out your dialogue a little bit better and helping it sound better. The next effect that I like to use is a de-esser, and that's just going to help with some of the harsh S sounds that you might get in some of your dialogue. So again, in your mixer, come to your effects, hit the plus, come down to restoration, fairlight effects, and de-esser. Now here, I like to start with a preset as well. These are all built in and resolve, nothing that you have to make yourself. I'm going to come down to male ESS. For me, if you're female, pick the female option. And then I like to make a few adjustments here. I like to narrow it down a little bit, and then I like to reduce the amount. Because usually I don't need too much, just a little bit. So let's uh, watch our reduction right here and see if it's doing anything. That's where we're going to go first. Um, jump in here, see about spark. 
All right, so we can see it's working because the reduction's coming down. So I think this has sounded pretty good. Junked out on me, just stopped working. So We're still around that minus 10 dB right here, which is right where I want my dialogue to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that effect. So now to hear a little quick before and after, I'm just gonna select this clip, use my option or alt, drag it down into a new track. I've got our original audio down here. I'm actually gonna reset it by clicking remove attributes. I'm gonna remove all of the attributes just so that it's as it originally was. We're gonna hear a little before and after. So let's hear the before, and then we're gonna go ahead and hear the after. Here's today's project. We were out pulling the kids around on the blaster the other day. And the after. And I was riding around for a little while, and then all of a sudden it just, uh, just jumped out on So what do you think? Which one sounds better, right? Now we do still have that echo or that reverb that we're trying to deal with, right? Now the best way that you can deal with that is in the studio version and is if you use a little bit of voice isolation. Now there are de-reverb plugins out there that do work pretty good, but in this case, I'm just gonna show you what's built into Resolve. You do need studio for this one though. So in order to use the voice isolation, I'm gonna select my track, let's close the mixer, open our inspector, and on my track right here, we've got voice isolation. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. Now, I definitely don't need 100%. I'm probably gonna need somewhere around 10 to 15%. So I'm gonna lower this back and start at zero, and I'm just gonna increase it as we listen to the clip until it sounds like it just brings down that, that background reverb a little bit. For a little while, and then all of a sudden it just, uh, just junked out on me, just stopped working. So, so that's what I'm gonna kind of look into today, see if we can get her running. So I went with 12% there, and I think that does a good job of keeping a little bit of that reverb, right? Because I'm in a garage and I, I want it to sound like I'm out there, right? And I think that little bit of reverb is okay, but it just brings down the amount of that reverb a little bit. So it does a good job there. I think they must have updated the voice isolation a little bit because it never did that good of a job on the reverb, because I've tried it before. But a little bit of voice isolation can go a long way in just bringing down that background noise a little bit. So there you have it. That is exactly how I edit all my audio here in DaVinci Resolve. It's just a few basic things that you go through, make changes based on your clip, and your audio is gonna sound awesome. Is it gonna be perfect? No, probably not, but it's gonna sound better than when you started. If you have questions on audio editing, on the process, on your specific case, drop me a comment. I'm happy to help you out. If you wanna learn more about audio, I do have an audio course, Audio Essentials for Video Editors in DaVinci Resolve. It teaches you everything you need to know, nuts, bolts, everything, end to end, all the good stuff about audio editing here in DaVinci Resolve. You can check that out. Link is also down in the description. And with that said, I am out of here. I will see you guys in the next video. Oh, if you make before and afters, post it because I want to see it. Drop me a link. Peace.